Hi, this is Ignoble Gnome, and uh, I'm here to show you a quick test of uh, a server that I hacked, and I put a rotary encoder inside it. Now, I'm not going to test the rotary encoder tonight, because uh, it's um, almost midnight. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to test to see if the server, which has all the servo brains removed, and just has um, the motor inside and the gears, plus now a rotary encoder. So with all of the metal bending, grinding, adjustments and things I had to do to get the encoder inside and hooked up to everything and into the gear train, um, I'm not 100% convinced that when I hook it up to power, um, it's just not going to rip itself apart. So you will witness uh, live as I test it and hook it up to the motor itself up to uh, power for the first time and either it'll spin and everything will be fine or it'll make horrible grounding noises and I'll go to bed very unhappy. So. Let's give it a shot. Here we go. Uh, what you're looking at here is what used to be a somewhat standard servo. And then I had uh, previously hacked it to just uh, pull out the servo board, which was burnt anyway, and um, just use it as a plain old motor. But uh, that wasn't fun enough, so I added inside a rotary encoder. Um, the encoder looks like, hmm, what did I do with that? Hmm, ah, here we go. Bag of parts arrived today. Let's do this with one hand. Aha. So the encoder came to me looking like this. And uh, it's got three little pins on it. And these pins over here are just uh, stabilized that they don't do anything electrical. And you can hear, well maybe you can't hear, but it's got sort of very obvious detents as you turn it around. And I think this one has 30 detents, so basically it should do, uh, you know, it makes a difference uh, every, has 30 clicks per revolution for this encoder, which is pretty good. Anyway, the problem is, is to get this thing in here, uh, this shaft is 6 millimeters. And uh, that 6 millimeters is exactly the right size to fit through the, um, the bearings, the metal bearings in this, in this servo. Um, unfortunately, to fit through the body of the middle portion of the servo, it had to be more like, oh, mm, 4 millimeters. So what I had to do is uh, drill the hole, the plastic body of this part out so that it could fit the 6 millimeters. And then, now the problem is that... Um, well, now there were a couple of problems. The problem I expected would be that, you know, the shaft would stick out too far and have to cut it down. But I ran into a, a different problem. The, the, and that different problem was that the middle gear of the gear train uh, actually just slightly brushed against this piece here in the center, um, which turns with the shaft. I can't really show that with one hand. Anyway, let me see if I can... Here we go. This might make more sense. Okay. This little middle bit here, if I could stay in focus. This little middle bit here turns with the shaft, and it was just a little bit too wide. So I took my, um, my Dremel tool, which I mounted sideways in a, in, a, in a mount I have for it, and I just carefully... Uh, ground away the middle portion of this piece of the shaft and I didn't want to ground away too much down on this side or this side because that's part of what helps it ride in the plastic casing over here the, the six millimeter hole so I wanted to leave a little bit of six millimeter here and a little bit here and, le and have it empty in the middle so that the gear could ride inside that safely without um, getting all ground up so I did that and that was a little hair raising then I ran into the problem that I expected, which was that now the the gear shaft just sticks out way too far, so I couldn't get this gear on. Um, so the the bearing nicely fit on here, but it sticks too far out. So I I cut it down so it was flush with the bearing, and that worked out just fine. Then notice I have a slotted shaft here, and I needed a way to mate this shaft with the inside of this gear. And um, there is a little slot inside of there, but it's a different, it's a little, um, it's not the same size as this, this slot. What it was was, uh, it was a little wider, 
and it was shorter um, lengthwise, it wasn't six millimeters. So what I did is one of the pieces, when I ground this down, I wound up with two little extra pieces. Actually, I ran it with one because one shot off into the darkness of my garage and I have no idea where it is. So I had one extra little piece of metal, um, you know, one side of this that got cut off. And what I did is I carefully, carefully, carefully ground that down so one side of it fit in what was left of this slot and the other side of it fit in the little slot in here, which had to be more narrow as well. So it's a you know, fairly detailed bit of uh, metal crafting there, but it works. Uh, well, we think it works. It fits. It fit back in the box. Everything fit back in the box. Uh, then um, I uh, w soldered the three wires, uh, ground and the channel A, channel B, either way, they don't matter. Um, into here, the two blue wires were the existing motor wires I had previously soldered in there. And then I hot glued the um, encoder in place. And I also put some hot glue as a strain relief for all the wires, and I screwed it all back together. Now I have one of the blue motor wires hooked up to ground of this battery pack, and I have the other hooked up to this switch, and the other side of that switch is hooked up to the positive. So when I switch the switch on, we will see what happens. So here we go. Cross your fingers. Okay, switch is coming on. Ah, wait a minute. Just for more um, dramatic effect here, we go into my box of parts. and pull out my uh, various servo widgets. Hang on, I just cannot do this with one hand. Can you open the ziplock with one hand? Better man than I. All right. So, various servo widgets. We'll stick one on here. So now, we'll easily, more easily, you'll see on camera a little bit more easily when that turns or doesn't. Here we go. Okay, well, it's turning. It, uh, it was loud before, in case you're wondering. So, um, the motor was already loud. Well, it seems to be working okay. So far, so good. Alright. So, next step is to actually uh, wire these up to uh, an Arduino or something, uh, or at least a circuit and uh, test the encoder. So, here we go. Awesome, hopefully. And uh, this is Ignoble Gnome, signing off.